You might have heard the word sound doctrine in church for the first time or maybe in a conversation with friends. So what does the word sound doctrine mean? So the word sound, having positive connotations in scripture, uh, typically refers to good or contextually biblical. Um, in essence, when combined with the word doctrine, this means good doctrine or biblical doctrine as we see in scripture. So sound doctrine comes from the Greek word didaskalia. Translated, this means instruction, teaching, or the word that we know, doctrine. Now, um, in the Bible, when we read and understand scripture, uh, the, the instruction and teaching expressed is the doctrine. This is the das kalia. Um, this also denotes that there is a um, bad doctrine when we're speaking of good. For example, if we take an outside biblical idea, for example, a contemporary issue, and we try to use that, that viewpoint and see scripture through that, we're taking an outside view and trying to find a solution in the Bible. Even though this may not be our intention, uh, we might misinterpret certain things in scripture. So instead of sound doctrine, what it is, is uh, when we read and understand the theology in scripture, whether simple or complex, the Bible is giving us instruction or teaching to help us make sense of the world, to help us make sense of current and modern day issues that may be occurring. Sound doctrine is so essential in the New Testament, so much that the Apostle Paul makes 28 specific references in regard to the instruction or teaching in his letters. For example, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 13, the infallible word of God says, Until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of Scripture, to exhortation, to teaching. Another example is uh, Titus chapter 1, verse 9. He must hold firm to the trustworthy word as taught, so that he may be able to give instruction in sound doctrine and also to rebuke those who contradict it. My final example in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 2-3, to three, uh, the infallible word of God reads, Preach the word, be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions. So today we see Apostle Paul stress on sound doctrine, uh, for example, it is very essential and edifying in the church. Um, here's some examples from our, our last verses in 2 Timothy. Um, we can see that it is used to reprove, rebuke, and exhort our brethren in Christ. Um, essentially, sound doctrine may protect us from misinterpreting or even being misled uh, by false teachers also mentioned in Scripture. Uh, for example, um, in our daily devotion and our personal sanctification, if we incorporate sound doctrine and it becomes something regular that we have um, exposure to or something also that we ground our faith a lot more into, it would be a lot easier to catch certain things, to really make sense of what's happening in the world. This was a basic introduction to understanding the word sound doctrine. My hope is that um, this was edifying for you, as it was for me and when I was learning it to share. Also, I pray and hope that we can grow together in our walk with Christ as we uh, mature and age in wisdom. God bless you and see you in the next one.